Thank you for showing up here in this virtual space. Just by being here, it shows your commitment to doing the important work of sustaining movements and sustaining yourself. Um, my name is Vic Bong, and I'm Greenlang's Environmental Equity. My work focuses on making sure that California's climate investments actually fund frontline communities. First, I'll be sharing a bit about why we are choosing to have a session on cultivating personal resilience. Next, I'll introduce our speaker, Kelsey Blackwell, who is an amazing somatics coach. Kelsey will then lead us through our next practice. And lastly, there will be some Q&A at the end where participants can send questions in the chat. To give folks some context, the reason why we wanted to have this offering during Summit, which is usually policy heavy, is to recognize that we need tools for healing. Reading the Summit chat yesterday and today, I saw people saying we are tired uh, as people of color with varying histories. To survive, we have had to force our bodies to meet the demands of capitalism, sometimes even ignoring our basic needs. And then you add a pandemic to that, it's a lot. Um, so as we do our advocacy for a different world, as we're responding to multiple urgent crises, there are times we might feel guilty if our body can't keep up. And sometimes it feels like, oh, it's like my fault that like I didn't self-care, but actually it's our body's response saying, hey, like I can't keep doing this. We can't keep doing this. Something has got to change. Um, and so even though sometimes it feels like listening to our body's messages about slowing down would take away from our advocacy, actually it deepens our advocacy. It's the first place we practice self-advocacy. It allows us to heal our trauma so that as we do our work, we don't actually replicate harmful hierarchies and social movements. It allows us to be grounded and the resilience needed to navigate conflicts and coalitions. And it's a then we can build the powerful multiracial and multi issue coalitions that allow us to work sustainably. Somatics is one way to reconnect to what our body needs and how we would create a society that meets the demands of our bodies and not the other way, way around. I am so thrilled to introduce our speaker today, Kelsey Blackwell. Welcome to the stage. Kelsey is a certified Matic coach and writer who is committed to undermining the master's tools with contemplative practices. Kelsey supports women and groups of color to be connect with their inherent wisdom, dignity, and worth. In addition to being impactful and powerful, Kelsey believes that working towards personal and collective liberation must also bring Thank you so much for joining us, Kelsey. Please take it away. Thank you so much, Vic. And hey, y'all. Hey, oh my god, I'm living for DJ Ome. Uh, I have not heard that Billy Ocean song forever. So, uh, nice to enter the session and already feel myself in my body. And I want to wish all y'all uh, a, a good afternoon, good evening. Um, I hope you got a little space to nourish your bodies and um, maybe take a little break. I've been able to dip into some of these sessions and they are so rich. And what this time will be is uh, space to integrate all that we are learning, all that's percolating by coming back into the body. I'm so excited and honored to host this space, which is um, really around holding this essential question of how do we, inside of our movements and inside of our uh, work towards social justice, prioritize time for our own resilience and rest? How do we uh, take some of the momentum and some of that vision that we're moving toward and carve it, turn it back toward ourselves so that we are also centering our own well-being and that that is uh, built into the work that we're doing uh, so that what we're doing can be sustainable and so that we aren't burning out, which we know is so common in doing this kind of heavy lifting. So, uh, <clears throat> thank you also for the introduction, but I'll say a couple other things about my work. I work primarily with folks of color, exploring and unpacking the ways that colonialism um, lives inside our bodies and, and taking on new practices that reconnect us with our ability to rest and our ability to embody what truly matters to us. 
So I'd like to just say, uh, open this, this session by saying that colonialism and the colonial project cannot survive if we are connected to our bodies. Another way to say that would be that colonialism survives by our disconnection from our bodies. Because inside of colonialism, what was required of the European bodies that came to the new world to um, uh, perpetuate harm, right? And to uh, uh, wreak havoc, genocide, right? What was required was a disconnection uh, from, from the body. And what was required of indigenous and BIPOC bodies in order to survive inside of the, that system. And to survive inside of that system requires that what we do, our worth is uh, required, uh, our worth is connected to what we do. So essentially, in order to prove our humanity, we have to work ourselves to exhaustion in order to prove uh, our worth and value, right? And that was established in the foundation of this country, and those systems are perpetuated by uh, what we're seeing now and what we are feeling in our own bodies. One of my teachers, Bio Akomalafe, and um, Bio is B-A-Y-O Akomalafe, A-K-O-M-O-L-A-F-E, Bio Akomalafe. He says, these times are urgent, therefore we must slow down. These times are urgent, therefore we must slow down. Slow down because it's uh, uh, contrary to all of the pressures that um, that we are that we feel on our bodies and all of the pressures that shape the colonial project. So, uh, what are the features of colonialism? Right, there's the sense of a disconnection from the body. There's a sense of uh, disconnection from the earth. Right, the extraction. Uh, there's a reliance on speed. You know, we got to get things done, urgency. Uh, there's a fear of relying on others, right? That's seen as weakness. Fear of not being in control. And if I'm not in control, then I need to do everything I can to try to reestablish control. And this um, centralizing of a Cartesian logic, which is this sort of linear logic over uh, what is emergent and felt over this um, uh, a more spiritual animist view of the world, right? And what are we moving toward collectively? We're moving toward communities of care. We're moving toward communities that are connected to the earth and honor the earth. We're moving toward communities that centralize our interconnection and, and recognize that as, as fact. And we're moving toward uh, communities that center our ability to claim joy, our ability to claim expression, and our ability to claim rest. Uh, and we can't externally create what isn't first created internally, right? Like, we can't create out there. We can't use the same tools to create something new. We have to come into contact with new tools. And that's where the body comes in. That's where our ancestral inheritance comes in. That's where our connection to spirit comes in. That's where our connection to the earth comes in, right? And somatics um, is a methodology that uh, holds the human in our wholeness. So oftentimes somatics is um, shortcut. Uh, people think somatics means the body and it does need the body, but it also means our sensory body, our emotional body, our sense, our, our uh, environmental body, our spiritual body, right? We're looking at uh, all the things that encompass what it means to be human and uh, how we can support life, how we can support our aliveness inside of that. So uh, this is what we're up to today in our work is uh, how do we come back to ourselves? How do we connect with new tools so that um, we're building, we're moving toward what we want to create 
and in the moment, creating it by how we're showing up for ourselves and how we're showing up inside of relationships and how we're taking care of our boundaries and our needs for rest and our needs to be the human animals, right? So I'd like you to just take a moment uh, 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 wherever you are right now and just start by uh, feeling the support of your chair or whatever you're sitting on or standing on. And let your shoulders come up, down, and back. And invite a little space between your back molars. Hmm. So from a somatic lens, we would say, we are what we practice, and we're always practicing something. You know, another thing that Bio says is that humans are practices. We are always in practice. That's what we are, we're practices. And so the question that somatics asks is, are the practices that we're in, do they support our aliveness? Do they support our well-being? What is, what's different in your body when you take a moment to settle back, let your shoulders roll back, invite a little space, maybe feel your breath? What's different inside of that versus leaning forward and pulling yourself in? Right? What do we notice shifts? What is this? What does that make possible? So I'm going to offer some practices today and the session will be a little bit different because uh, you won't necessarily even need to be in front of a screen, right? As long as you can hear me, uh, you'll be fine. And in fact, I almost encourage you to step away <laughs> from the screen because <laughs> I think we spend a lot of time in front of screens in this society, and there's a utility to that. There's a there's a need for that, and then there's also like when can I um, step away and, and nourish myself um, and shut down, you know, uh, looking out and start to look in. So it's a bit of a paradox to be using a screen to support coming in toward oneself, and uh, one way that we can play with that is to allow yourself to not even be in front of your screen for this session. Uh, the other thing, the, the other agreements inside of our work today is to take care of yourself and listen to your body, shift and move as your body is called to do. This is a perfection-free space. So if you have a question, you don't need to worry about saying it just right, you know. Um, if you have a noticing, you don't need your, no, your noticing need not be profound in order to be worth hearing and worth sharing. Uh, everything that I suggest is a choice and you can use your own discernment to decide what's right for you. And you can at any time uh, 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 not do something that I'm offering, right? Like mm, maybe that's not what my body needs right now. All right, so let's just take a breath there. <sighs> All right, so this first practice is a practice called exformation. And everything I'm offering, please take it, please use it, please have it in your own life. I'll also send some resources so you can reconnect to this work post our session. So exformation is a practice that comes from um, interplay, which is a body wisdom practice that centers our birthright practices of movie, movement, storytelling, and song to come into contact with the wisdom of the body. And um, it's a methodology that I study and teach. And inside of interplay, the, the um, idea is that information comes into our body uh, from what we uh, see in the media, uh, from our time in this conference, right? All the, all the insights, all the quotes that we have written down, all the, all the things that it sparked, all the questions that we're holding, all of that is actually data that collects in the body. And in our society, in this age of information, we need practices to help us move out all the information that we're consuming. 
And so X formation is a practice to help us move information out. And part of the reason that we want to exform is because we don't always need to hold on to everything. And by exforming, we're letting our body, we're creating a little space in our bodies so that whatever we don't need, whatever might be bogging us down has a space to move. Our bodies naturally exform. So uh, some various forms of exformation, going on a run, taking a, a, a long stretch break, dancing, yawning, riding a bike, uh, playing the drums, right? All of these practices that are embodied. And if you have a practice like that, you may notice like there are times when you just feel like I need to go on a run or I need a stretch or I need to take a shower. Taking a shower is another form of exformation. So the body naturally um, calls for these moments of pause and reprieve to integrate information and to kind of shake out or, or release what we don't need to hold. And we can intentionally exform so that uh, we're proactively doing this rather than, you know, our, our body indicating that it's a triage situation and then we have to go do something, right? We can attend to moments when we've consumed a lot of information, like, you know, this, this um, two day event, we've consumed a lot of information. Let's take these pauses, right? These dance breaks with DJ Omi. These, these are forms of exformation. Here in the, the Bay Area, uh, when before pre-COVID I would ride BART and just being on the, the public transit with all of the different bodies and all of the different smells and all of the different energies, I would find that after a train ride, I would get off and I would just need to shake my body because there was a lot of information that I, I took in. So if you'd like to join me, we'll do a little X formation together right now. The first thing you can do is just to shake out Shake out a hand. Oh, and my dog is in the room. She really likes it when I exform. So she's getting excited. <laughs> she may jump up here. And to shake out your other hand. And shake out both of your hands. You have to go down there. Yeah, go down there. <laughs> <laughs> and then shake out what you're sitting on. Shake out your booty. And now I'd like you to shake out your face. And I'd like you to shake out your face and your voice. <sighs> and now shake out your whole body, face, voice hands, booty at the same time. And let's do that again. And you may notice you want to stand up or move around. Feel free to do that. Maybe drop your shoulders a little bit. And take a moment and just pause and notice. Notice what that felt like. Notice what you, what you're feeling in your body now. And in noticing, we're just tuning into sensation. So sensation is temperature, uh, movement, uh, streamings like. Does the energy feel like it's moving in different parts of your body? This is the language of the body. Sensation is the language of the body. So I like to start with exformation as a primary somatic practice because as we come into these, in these practices, which mean we're tuning into the subtlety of the body, oftentimes the mind is carrying so much information that it's hard to drop into subtlety, right? Like our mind is going a million miles a minute. So it's like 
how do I actually tune into what's happening here? And X formation is a great uh, um, first practice to just do, you know, after a call or after a, a long meeting to just shake your body. Another form of X formation is to take a deep breath and let it out with a long sigh. So that could look something like this. <sighs> Let's do one more of those. <sighs> and as you take that long uh, exhale, that long sigh, you may notice that on the other side of that, that your body wants to shift, right? Or maybe your shoulders want to roll or your neck wants to roll or, you know, you want to um, uh, uh, breathe, feel into the chest and notice some sensation there and maybe place a, a hand there. Right? You're just taking a moment to pause and check out what's here. So if we are um, leaders inside of movements, right, if we're working for nonprofits, we can start to, just as Greenlining has done with these dance breaks, we can start to intentionally insert moments of exformation into our meeting spaces. Uh, we can make this part of our culture and how we're gathering uh, that, you know, oh, somebody, you know, like, oh, we, we just uh, had an hour long uh, session. Let's shake our bodies or let's take a deep breath together, let it out with a long sigh. All right, so the next practice that I'm going to introduce for us today, and this is one where I really suggest that if you can uh, move away from your screen, if that's available to you, to do so. And this practice is called centering. It's a very common somatic.